Hey guys, it's Nick. You know, with bad target earnings bringing the stock down 25% because of increased costs from inflation, the rest of the stock market followed and it was down a lot. Now, to make matters worse, Cisco reported bad earnings with even worse forward guidance, which dropped the stock around 15% in the after hours. I want to look at Cisco today and compare it to when it was the king of the stock market because there is a lot to learn in its rise and fall that you should use when you look at the price to earnings ratios of the high flying stocks of today. Also, I want to show you what the opinions of experts and analysts are really worth. Now, for those that don't remember, Cisco was the ultimate story stock. The story was that the internet was a great new technology gold rush that was taking over the world, and Cisco was the guy selling the pickaxes and the blue jeans to all the internet gold miners. And everyone knew that you can just buy it at any price and you will be guaranteed to make money because the internet was growing like crazy. So let's take a look at Cisco's earnings today. So Cisco's earnings were bad and they said, we did not have a plan for our country to shut down. They're talking about supply chain issues from China. And so they reported their third quarter net income of about $3 billion or 73 cents a share. That wasn't that terrible, but they said their next quarter will be a actual decline in year over year revenue and earnings. So let's take a quick look. Cisco closed at about $48 and now it's about 13% lower. It has a $200 billion market cap and a PE ratio of 17. Although after these earnings, it's going to be more like a PE ratio of about 15. And so you see the previous four quarters, they earned about, call it $3 billion per quarter, so about $12 billion in the last trailing 12 months. Now let's go back to the year 2000. For those who don't know, Cisco was the first trillion dollar company. Now it never reached a trillion, but everybody just assumed it was going to be a trillion dollar company. So this is February 13th, 2000. And so this analyst at CS First Boston, Paul Weinstein, declared that Cisco is on track to top Microsoft in the next few years and become the first company with a market value exceeding $1 trillion. And they say, on the face of it, that's not really asking much of Cisco, just a little more than a doubling of the stock price from here, which is what shares did in 1998 and 1999. So, you know, 100% a year every year, no problem, right? At twice today's price, Cisco would trade about 260 times estimated 2,000 earnings per share. And another article like that, March 19th, 2000, here it says, 37 investment banks recommend either a buy or a strong buy. None recommended a sell or even a hold. Again, March 19th, 2000. We'll look at a chart in a minute. So an analyst at Morgan Stanley, who coincidentally also took Cisco public a decade ago, is one of the Cisco bulls. Cisco stock is trading at roughly 120 times Mr. Kelly's earnings estimate of $1.13 a share. So he's saying a forward estimate, not where it currently is, which is more like 250 PE at this point. And this is the, this is the best part, how they try to justify a high PE ratio. The multiple or price to earnings ratio is a number that places a value on a stock. It is a ratio of the price of the stock to the profit of a company expressed per shares outstanding. And here he says, a low PE usually signals investors are uncomfortable. Yes, I hate those 15 PEs. I much rather have those 1,000 PEs. Cisco has a tremendous track record of continuous upside surprises, and Cisco is viewed as opening several new markets, the biggest of which is optical, which is expected to be an explosive market. So there's the story for everybody. At the time of this writing, March 14th, Cisco's market cap was $465 billion versus Microsoft's $510 billion. They have such an impressive track record of growing that the financial community isn't thinking in terms of a multiple of what they're earning this year, 
but what they will be earning three or four years down the line. So believe the beautiful story a few years out. Don't worry that this thing is so overpriced right now. So let's see where Cisco was when this article was written. Uh, right here, this is the month of March 2000. And Cisco got up to about $80 split adjusted and promptly fell to, what is that, $8 about? And so 22 years later, Cisco is now $42 where it's going to open up tomorrow, something like that, uh, about 50% lower than where it was when 37 analysts had strong buys on Cisco stock and it could do no wrong and the story was the greatest story ever told. So this is a chart of the Cisco PE ratio and at its peak, it was 251 in April of 2000 and look where it's been in the last 10, 15 years. Right now it's about 17 to 15. So why did their PE drop? Did their revenue drop or something? Well, in 2000, their revenue was almost $19 billion. Had a little dip uh, after the internet bubble popped, but it's been steady climbing to about 50, 50, 52 billion dollars recently. So it's not the revenue. Well, then it must be the net income, the profits, right? Well, let's take a look. In 2000, their profits were 2.6 billion for the year. It did drop after the internet bubble, but it's steady increased and just recently in the last 12 months, their net income is about $12 billion. So it is about five times higher than it was in 2000. And since you don't know how many shares they had outstanding here versus now, let's compare just apples to apples. This is the earnings per share annual. In 2000, it was 39 cents a share. And right now it's about $3 a share. Per year and of course it's market cap if you would have bought it at the top was 540 billion but now it's more like 200 billion so even though revenue net income and earnings per share has increased significantly over the 20 years if you had, had bought when these 37 analysts said strong buy or buy or whatever you'd be down 50 percent on your money over 22 years approximately so let's take a quick look at the P.E. ratio of the S&P 500. Right now, it is about 20. Just recently, November 2020, it was as high as 36 or so. Historically, the S&P P.E. ratio is about 17 to 20, something along those lines. But during the great financial crisis, 2008, 2009, it shot up to 122. And then on the way down... <laughs> It also overcorrected and went down as far as 13. Similar during the internet bubble, it went above 40, 46, something like that. So these run-ups here are mass euphoria of everybody believing that it's always going to be this great and you should expect uh, Cisco to go up 100% every year forever and that kind of thing. Uh, when the euphoria wears off and people start coming to their senses, then it overshoots to the downside. And so we are here peak euphoria, and now we are coming back down to our senses, and it will probably still overshoot to the downside some more. So if you're still confused on what the PE is or why you should care about it, think of it as the value you're getting for the stock. So at a 10 PE, it means you're willing to pay $10 for every $1 a year in earnings on your $10. And so that would equate to a $10 stock price. And that would mean you're getting a 10% return on your money. If you buy when the PE is 20 and the earnings are still a dollar a share, the stock price will be $20, but your return will only be 5% per year because you're paying $20 for $1. So it takes you 20 years to make your money back. So that's 5% a year. And so conversely, if you're paying a PE of 200 and the earnings are a dollar a share, that stock is going to be $200 and it will take you 200 years to make your money back at this same earnings per share. So that is half a percent a year for 200 years will get you your money back. That's why it is a really bad idea to buy very high P.E. stocks. 
And one more thing to look at is when the euphoria wears off, the PE usually compresses for most stocks. So on the way up, the PE expands because people are willing to pay more because they're euphoric. But on the way down, it compresses because people are willing to pay less. So that stock that had a 25 PE that you thought was cheap and had a dollar per share per year in earnings, the stock price was 25. If the earnings don't change at all, but the market goes down and people's perception of the market's risk goes up, then they may assign only a 15 PE to what they're willing to pay for this stock. And that would mean that the stock would go to $15 a share, even though their earnings never decreased. Now, if we hit a recession and the earnings decrease to half of what they were before, this 25 PE at half the earnings is 1250. But if the PE compresses down to 15 and the earnings per share drop to half, then the stock price is going to be 750. So that's a big difference between 750 and $25. And notice I don't have any charts or tables for stocks that have zero earnings per share because I don't recommend you buy any of those. So guys, when you are excited about a can't lose stock like Tesla or Shopify or whatever, take a step back and really think about what you are paying or $1 in earnings and realize that even insane growth will eventually slow down and the PE will also come down when all the euphoria goes away. When that happens, what will you be left with? Do you really want to buy a stock like Cisco at $80 and still be down 50% on your money 22 years later, even though they have continued to grow their revenue and earnings? In this market downtrend with the Fed as a headwind instead of a tailwind, a lot of air is going to come out of these story stocks and they will adjust to a more normal PE. Even if their earnings don't fall in the coming recession, people will value them at a much lower PE than before. Remember, it's never different this time. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.